In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. We call to mind the Good Shepherd who loves us, knows us, and forgives us. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you are the Good Shepherd leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God, the Father. Amen. Let us pray in our Mass this evening. Remember the happy repose of the soul of Bridie Macaulay. We pray her soul enjoys the happiness of heaven. And we pray for her family gathered here this evening. Almighty and ever-living God, lead us to share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul and Barnabas carried on from Perga till they reached Antioch in Pisidia. Here they went to the synagogue on the Sabbath and took their seats. When the meeting broke up, 
many Jews and devout converts joined Paul and Barnabas, and in their talks with them, Paul and Barnabas urged them to remain faithful to the grace God had given them. The next Sabbath, all, almost the whole town assembled to hear the word of God. When they saw the crowds, the Jews, prompted by jealousy, used blasphemies and contradicted everything Paul said. Then Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly. We had to proclaim the word of God to you first. But since you have rejected it, since you do not think yourselves worthy of eternal life, we must turn to the pagans. For this is what the Lord commanded us to do when he said, I have made you a light for the nations, so that my salvation may reach the ends of the earth. It made the pagans very happy to hear this and they thanked the Lord for his message. All who were destined for eternal life became believers. Thus, the word of the Lord spread through the whole countryside. But the Jews worked up, uh, upon some of the devout women of the upper classes and the leading men of the city and persuaded them to turn against Paul and Barnabas and expel them from their territory. So they shook the dust from their feet in defiance and went off to Iconium. But the disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. The response to the psalm, we are his people, the sheep of his flock. <clears throat> Cry out with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him, singing for joy. Response. Know that he, the Lord, is God. He made us, we belong to him. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Response. Indeed, how good is the Lord, eternal his merciful love. He is faithful from age to age. Response. A reading from the book of the Apocalypse. I, John, saw a huge number, impossible to count, of people from every nation, race, tribe, and language. They were standing in front of the throne and in front of the Lamb, dressed in white robes and holding palms in their hands. One of the elders said to me, These are the people who have been through the great persecution, and because they have washed their robes white again in the blood of the Lamb, they now stand in front of God's throne and serve him day and night in his sanctuary. And the one who sits on the throne will spread his tent over them. They will never hunger or thirst again. Neither the sun nor scorching wind will ever plague them, because the lamb who is at the throne will be their shepherd and will lead them to springs of living water and God will wipe away all tears from their eyes. The word of the Lord. the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my own sheep, and my own know me.
The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, The sheep that belong to me listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never be lost. No one will ever steal them from me. The Father who gave them to me is greater than anyone, and no one can steal from the Father. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. This weekend, known as Good Shepherd Sunday, and we finish our nine-day novena. Okay, okay. Um, We finish our nine-day novena. In churches uh, throughout our diocese of Don and Connor. The priests are telling their uh, vocation and story. I think I'm here long enough for you to know my vocation story. But let us, in our Mass this evening, remember that each person has their own story, their own vocation and life. No greater or better than the other. We are focusing on vocations in our church in this nine-day novena. And that's important for us to pray, to encourage, and to work towards the homes and places and parishes where vocations, the priesthood, can grow. We do that because we all need shepherds. Jesus is the good shepherd, the one who leads, the one who knows, the one who guides, and the one who can give us everything we need. We think in that way this evening. We think in that way this evening, knowing our own story and knowing and hoping for the new stories of vocations in our church. Let us encourage others to think in this particular way. Our bishop is in St. Peter's tomorrow, and he's sharing his story. It's important for us to talk about our story in faith, in hope, and in love. Our readings this evening remind us of the early church and the work of the disciples, the sharing of the faith, the sharing of the story of faith, its greatness and its problems, where it is accepted and where it is rejected. Because we do live in a time when priesthood and church and people are faith, are rejected and everything they have to offer. We live in a difficult world. But the world existed long before now. And the God who created this world and the Son who came into this world and the spirit that lives in this world and in each one of us will always, always win, succeed. Yet, we must participate. We must get involved. We must say the yes that Mary said all those years ago. God will not force his way into our lives He will never force someone to become a priest. He invites 
he calls and encourages us to do the same. I ask you, I ask you, please, once a week, say to someone, encourage someone to think about the priestly life, the priestly work, and the wonderful, wonderful priestly ministry in our church. Let's not think away far. Let's think about here in our local church, in our homes. We've had an ordination. It was 40 years since the last ordination in this church. We need more. We need to encourage and we need to pray and we need to show about our wonderful faith, just like the first disciples. Our wonderful faith feeds us completely. Let us stand and profess. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, the Ricker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things remain. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate with the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We make our prayers before our Heaven Father. We pray for his wisdom today, reminding us of his Son as the Good Shepherd who leads us, knows us, and loves us. Lord, hear us. We pray for conversion of heart, mind, and body. We pray for an increase of generosity, especially in our homes, especially listening to the call of vocations in our church. Lord, hear us. Pray for the sick of our Christ. We pray for the healing touch to be with them. Lord, hear us. And we remember our dead, especially Brady McCauley. We pray for all our dead that they enjoy the happiness of heaven. Lord, hear us. Our last prayer in our nine day novena. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd who never leaves his flock untended. As we are nourished by your word, help us to share our faith with others. Send more laborers into your harvest to serve as priests, deacons, sisters, and brothers. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you now for the Sunday collection. The Mass times are all the same this coming week. Thank you.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us and defends us every plea, our cause, before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain, who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land and every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. created rightly gives you praise through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit. You give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice has been offered in your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you that by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought for, to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving thanks. He said the blessings, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, 
he took the chalice and given you thanks. He said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Savior of the world. Save us, Savior of the world. Over by your Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of his saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to the second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, be filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain the inheritance of your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spies, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints who are on constant intercession in your presence, we reply, depend on their unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith, in charity, your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Noel our Bishop, and all the clergy. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, we remember riding and all who were pleasing to you at their time of passing in this life. Give them kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be.
Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by your precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.